In August 1982, Commodore International released its new 8-bit home computer, the follow-up to its million-selling VIC-20. the Commodore 64. Over the next 12 years, it would go on to become the most successful single computer model of all time, selling upwards of 17 million units worldwide. Even after Commodore and other manufacturers moved on to 16-bit computers in the mid-80s, the 64 still managed to remain popular. However, by the late 80s, game consoles were starting to eat into Commodore's market. The 64 had amassed quite a library of games during its long lifespan, and so Commodore's management came up with a plan to combat this threat, stripped down the venerable Commodore 64 to nothing but the board, a cartridge slot, and a controller. In December 1990, it shipped the Commodore 64 game system, more commonly referred to as the Commodore 64 GS. This is almost literally a Commodore 64, but with all the expansion slots removed or covered up by the casing, and missing the keyboard. I can only assume this was meant to keep costs down in order to undercut other microcomputers and game consoles of the day. The 64GS released to much fanfare from Commodore itself, with a 99 British pounds price tag and the promise of 100 games for the system by Christmas. It shipped with a four game cartridge that featured International Soccer, Clax, Flimbo's Quest, and Fiendish Freddy's Big Top of Fun. The system had further problems. It was essentially compatible with every Commodore 64 cartridge game on the market, but because most of those required keyboard input to either play or even start the game, they were impossible to play on the 64GS. Heck, one of the biggest releases for the system was Terminator 2, with the 64GS badge right on the box. Unfortunately, someone somewhere screwed up, and the game actually required keyboard input to start. This cartridge-only setup led to further problems, as many of the games on the 64 were housed on cassette or floppy disk, which were usually much cheaper. Thus, even if your 64GS game was simply a port of an older cassette game, it cost more at retail. Even the pack-in cartridge featured three cassette ports, and International Soccer was actually a re-release from 1983. Out of the long list of major problems faced by the 64GS, the biggest was the fact that the hardware was just far too old to be worth purchasing. Just like Amstrad's GX4000, released only weeks earlier, Commodore had repackaged an old 8-bit computer right at the time when Nintendo and Sega were pushing 16-bit game consoles. Ultimately, there were only about 80,000 Commodore 64 game systems manufactured, and of those, less than 25% were actually sold. And those 100 games Commodore promised by Christmas? Only 28 of them were ever released during the system's lifespan. And only 9 of those were original games. The rest were ports of older Commodore 64 titles. Commodore itself never published another cartridge for the system outside of the original pack-in. The Commodore 64 game system was discontinued after only a few months on the market.